This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Noah. Well, here we are, finally, taking a look at the Vortex Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. If you're in the market for something tactical but not willing to spend over a grand, this is coincidentally priced right at around $700 currently. And for that, you actually get a lot for your money. But is any of that any good? Well, thankfully, my good friend Noah decided, hey, here you go, here's my Strike Eagle to finally review. He bought this when they first came out a little over a year ago, and he really enjoys it. Because for the price that he paid for it back then, like around 600 bucks, just before uh, COVID really sort of exploded, it serves his purpose extremely well, which is a budget-friendly, high-powered variable optic. So with that all said, let's take a look at this box. It looks to be pretty typical mid-range Vortex. Now this is not their low budget range. That's gonna be for the Diamondback Tackle, the Crossfire and whatnot. This Strike Eagle is trying to compete with the PST, but not be the PST. The PST Gen 2s are designed to be 30 millimeter tubes, fairly small objectives, fairly lightweight, and just really good overall. Those are made in the Philippines. These are made in China, as you can see right there. This is obviously in mils. So we're gonna have the good 7C reticle. And I already showed it, but there's all the information you're going to need on the back. Claims to have a weight of 30.4 ounces, so we'll see how that stacks up against the Vortex Venom 5-25. to Anyway, let's crack this box open and see what we've got. Now, this I literally took off, of, took off of his rifle, and then he gave me the box afterwards. So it's missing a couple things like the sunshade. However, everything else is going to be included. Before we look at that, let's go real quickly. Oh, this is your zero stop, which is actually the exact same that you find in the Venom and the Razor LHT. And let's go over these two books. I love these keys, by the way. Um, many manufacturers put these out, and this is fantastic. This, if you're unaware, you know, I'll pull this out and show you. Instead of having to use a quarter, you use one of these. They fit in here really tight, and then you can, I mean, clearly you gotta hold this you can unscrew your battery compartments or the tops of your turrets extremely easily. I will not be using this because this is his. I have several on the shelf next to me, so I'll be using those. Let's go through these books real quick. This is the reticle manual. If you're unfamiliar with the 7C, it is probably one of my, yeah, it's probably my favorite of the Vortex reticles. It's got a very fine center dot and a very well illustrated tree. So it's very easy to hold at distance instead of having to dial. Um, yeah, these books are, are great. Read them. As far as the product manual itself, again, very simple and basic information. If you don't know how to set up an optic, read this thoroughly, and it'll give you all the basic information of not only how to set up, but how it actually works. Maybe one day I'll actually spend the time to go through this thoroughly, but, uh, today is not the day. So, this is what you get, minus the bubble level. You also get a sunshade, which is not included because he didn't have it in the box, but you do get a throw lever, which is nice, and this lovely bikini cap. I am a fan of these, as I've said many, many times, because they're very usable. They're functional, and uh, they don't add any weight or bulk to your optic. When, of course, you're not using them. And here we are. There are some love marks on this thing because this is on his CZ457 Precision that he takes out all the time, at least twice a month, and puts a couple hundred rounds through it each and every time. Also, I've shot this thing for on his gun and my own guns for a long time, so I have a pretty good sense of how well this thing works. Anyway, going over it real quick, the anodizing you can see has a couple of marks on it where the rings sit, because the anodizing does feel a little on the thinner side. But for the price point of around 600 bucks, there's not much you could really expect, especially for everything else that this thing packs. What do I mean by that? 34 millimeter tube, 56 millimeter front objective, locking turrets with zero stop, illumination, and a side focus that goes all the way down to 15 yards. So it's a lot for the price. And yeah, this 700 is what it's going for right now. I'm sure you could find these on sale for the high fives, low sixes. So it really is in a good sweet spot as far as mid-budget goes. With all that being said, we're gonna start at the back of the fast focus eyepiece. It is very smooth. You could hear the seal rubbing inside, but it doesn't sound bad and it's very, very smooth. All the way out, quarter turn in. You could actually hear that. Almost sounds like there's a little bit of grit inside there, but there is a bit of movement. Again, it's just a fast focus eyepiece. There's nothing special about this. The knurling, though, that's on this is very, very nice. It has a very good edge to it. 
The knurling on the back of the magnification ring is about the same, but they do include a throw lever, which is really, really nice. So it saves you, if you're buying a Vortex one, like 40 bucks or so, or if you're buying an MK machining, anywhere from $25 and up. That being said, however, magnification is 180 degrees from minimum to maximum, so right smack dab in the middle of average. Magnification ring by itself without the throw lever is very easy to turn and very smooth. Almost as smooth as I would say the razor is. In fact, why not pull out my razor and compare it? Actually, this one, you could hear a little more of the seal rubbing on this, but this is a little bit harder to turn than this one is because this, again, sees a lot of range time. So it's very smooth, it's broken in. Very, very good. From there, we're gonna take a look at the illumination control, which as you can clearly see, has a single off and then 11 brightness settings. This being an HPVO, I'm not expecting this thing to be super bright, but bright enough in dark environments to work is always nice. That's a little bit better. I should have brightened this up a while ago. Anyway, the knurling that's on this illumination control is very aggressive, very sharp, and it feels fantastic. And the action on it, is very good, very tight detents. Once it's in there, it's not going anywhere. As far as what is under the battery compartment, you're gonna find, whoa, you're gonna find yourself a sand standard CR2032. This one just so happens to be made in Japan, which is pretty cool. You're gonna see the three dimples in the middle, and the double spring on top. So again, completely standard, but perfectly fine and functional. You do also have a fat O-ring on the corner of the cap, so you don't have to worry about water or anything getting inside. Honestly, this is extremely well done. The only way this could be better is if you didn't have to worry about holding down the illumination control to take off the cap. Other than that, this is basically perfect. No joking here, completely serious. It is fantastic. They could have easily have done the same splining that they did on the side focus and both turrets, as you can see here. This also feels really good in hand, but not as good as this neural one. So, good job, Vortex. On to the side focus. You can, like I said earlier, it goes down to 15 yards and goes to infinity. Now, this is just over 180 degrees, about 200-ish degrees, so you don't have that much um, finite tuning ability to it but you do go from 15 to 100 is most of your adjustment. Then from 100 to infinity, it's a very fine sweep. All that being said, again, they did a really good job with smoothing this out. This feels very, very good. As far as the turrets go, these are not only zero stop capable, but also locking, which is really nice. And they have 10 mils per rotation, which I wish more manufacturers would do. Give us at least numbers divisible by 10. So five or, well, 20 would be too much. 10 is literally the perfect number. Even if you have the zero, like what we usually do at a 50 yards for a 22 LR, going out to 200 yards is just about seven to eight mils, depending on the load. And then going out to 320-ish yards, it's like 15 to 16, depending on the temperature and again, the load. So it's really easy to go, okay, and then all the way up. I'm already getting ahead of myself. These things do sound really good. They have a nice solid click, but they do have some play. However, once you load up to one side, the clicks are very good. Very nice sound and a very nice tactile feel. Tactile. And the locking on it is a pretty good action. Now, again, just because I have it out, how does this compare to something like the Razer HD? Well, the lock is already significantly better on the Razer, just has a better feel. And there's much less slop in the Razer. The Razer also has an indication, a rotation indicator right there. Regardless though, for the price, these are really nice sounding and feeling turrets. And the fact that they are locking is a nice treat. We get the exact same action and feel 
with a little bit different noise on the windage. But you can see we have a little bit of play there, but once you take that up, it's very easy to line up with where you want to go and lock it in place. We have five total mills in each direction off of zero, which actually we got way more than that. That was 10 mils, and I don't feel like destroying this thing or ruining it too much for my friends, so I will return it back to zero, and that will be that. So as what's under the cap, very easy to remove these. You can see here we have the actual lock that's going to secure the turret to the erector. We have an O-ring on the outside over here, another O-ring on the inside, and internal threads to go on the erector body there in the middle. A little hard to get that thing focused just right, but it all works really well. How do you set zero on this? Well, if you look under the cap, you're going to see that pin right there, and then you, there's a pin. Where are you? Oh, right there at the bottom. So what you do is you get the zeroed where you want it. You pull the cap off. You're going to take the ring, rotate the stop, put it on, rotate it clockwise until it... Come on. Do I have it on backwards? No. Oh, oh. There's an O-ring there. I wasn't pressing past the O-ring. So rotate to stop. Take your turret, like so. And you'd put your zero on it right there. And now I'd have to actually screw this back in. Good enough. But now you can unlock this, turn it up. So up doesn't really matter. But once you get to zero, it's usually about half a mil, as you can see, before you hit a hard stop on that ring. So you don't have to worry about the erector getting pulled out from bottoming out washers or something like that. Very easy, easy system, and it's got two hard pins on that aluminum disc. So if it does get binded up or, or, or damaged, you replace that, that ring, and you're good to go. Foolish me, I almost forgot to talk about weight. The Strike Eagle comes in at about 31 and a half ounces. Keep in mind, that's including this bubble level, which I don't think came with it, but also the throw lever, which does. So 31 ounces, let's call it. Comparing that to a Razor Gen 2, 3 to 18, significantly heavier, heavier 16 ounces heavier. But... If we compare it to a Vortex Venom 5 to 25, oh yeah. How does this thing compare? Huh. It's five ounces heavier, doesn't have illumination, and has fewer features. So why is this heavier? More on that soon enough. So now with all that being said, let's get behind this and see what it actually looks like to use. I'm sure the first question on your mind is, how's the illumination? Well, it's a budget-friendly HPVO, which means clearly it's not that great. But you know what? It's a nice touch to have. As far as the image that we have here at 5x at 30 yards, it is so far looking very good. I also really like, just similar to with the Venom, we do not see much of the scope body. Here at 30 yards, however, you didn't really notice a shadow come up, but you'll see very soon that that's going to change. As far as adjusting the side focus on this thing, it is nowhere near as easy, fast, or crisp as I would say the Venom or the Razer HD. The Venom has a much larger sweep from its minimum 15 yards to 100 yards, whereas this thing is very short and tight. And I mean tight in more than one way. It's tight because the knob is actually very tight to turn, which is not a problem, but it's also a very small window. Here, pushing our distance back to 400 yards, again at 5x, we have a very nice image. I adjust the side focus to what it should line up at our 400 yards, which is about 360 meters. So, I wonder how well it's going to actually look when we fully zoom it in. Slowly ramping it up from 5x, you'll see that just like we saw with the Venom, we do get a little bit of darkening to the corners. I'm not too sure if that's just a design flaw with the Venom and the Strike Eagle, but it's there. But again, it's not really noticeable once you're behind it. Finally bringing it up all the way to its maximum at 25x, you're going to start to see the image isn't 100% perfect to what it was on the dial, but damn is it really, really close. And for many of you, you could be like, oh, well, you actually use those numbers? Actually, I do like using them as a reference. It's very nice to have. But 
Clearly, the image here is very good. We do have a little bit of chromatic aberration at the very top, but it was a slightly overcast day, which sometimes when it's overcast, it seems to showcase a lot of the imperfections a lot more than when it's a bright sunny day. And it makes sense because bad light in is bad light out. With that though, that's gonna conclude this unboxing. A huge thank you to my friend Noah for finally lending this for a review because it's been on his rifle for way too long without me getting my grubby hands on it. And a huge thank you for all of you for watching. Please stay tuned for the full review coming soon. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't wanna join either of those, I completely understand but you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.